Hello, I am Despina Papadopoulou from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, and I would like to welcome you to the unit Language Teaching in Migrants and Refugees. The unit includes this introductory video as well as two more videos, one on grammar and one on vocabulary teaching in migrants and refugees. In this video, we will look at some figures regarding migration. We will outline the educational challenges for migrant and refugee students, as well as for teachers, and we will discuss some insights on grammar and vocabulary teaching in a second language. According to the records of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, around 89 million people have been forced to leave their countries due to war, poverty, and other reasons, while 27 million of them are refugees and 36 million of them are children. The large numbers of migrant and refugee children in formal and non-formal education have enriched cultural and linguistic diversity in school, but at the same time, education needs to face new challenges. Firstly, almost half of the migrant and refugee children are out of school, while trauma affects the children's social and school life and also their academic progress. Additionally, many migrant and refugee children have minimal or interrupted previous formal schooling and thus their literacy in the first language may be low. Due to their living conditions, among other things, their abilities in the second language may also be low. Moreover, the teachers do not always have adequate training to address the student's needs and to engage them in the lesson. We now turn to some recent approaches and techniques adopted in L2 teaching. An approach that has dominated recent literature on L2 grammar teaching is focus on form, which aims at drawing students' attention to specific grammatical forms within a meaningful context. Focus on form can be input-based, that is, emphasis is given to the input presented to the student, or output-based, in which emphasis is given to the output the students produce. Here, we will focus on one input-based approach, processing instruction, and one output-based approach, group dictation. Processing instruction has been developed by Bill Van Patten and his colleagues and aims at manipulating the input in such a way as to make the students notice the grammatical forms. One important component of processing instruction is structured input activities, which force the learner to process the grammatical forms in order to comprehend the sentences. For example, in the activity presented here, the learners need to process the tense of the verbs in order to answer the questions, since there are no other lexical means, like for example, adverbs that indicate time reference. Group dictation entails collaboration among students and thus interaction that provokes language production. There are several varieties of group dictation. Here, we will briefly present dictogloss, while in the second part of this unit, we will focus on running dictation. Dictogloss is a form of text reconstruction. The learners read or listen to a text while they also take notes. Then they have to reconstruct the text in groups and in the final stage, they compare their version of the text with the original one. The text needs to include many instances of the target grammatical phenomenon so that the learners are forced to use these forms and thus negotiate them with their classmates during the reconstruction phase. Moving on to L2 vocabulary teaching, one technique that can be used is translation, either by means of Google Translator or multilingual dictionaries. This technique sheds some light on the learner's first languages and can promote multilingual competence. Other well-known techniques in L2 vocabulary teaching are flashcards, 
where the word meaning is shown on a picture and pantomime in which the teacher, but also the learners, use body movement to represent meaning. In the third part of this unit, we will expand more on these two techniques. Moreover, contextual information can be used to comprehend the meaning of a word. In the example provided, the word trees and flowers provide an indication of what the word plants means. We will further discuss contextual cues in the third part of this unit. Morphology can also help learners make connections among words. In the example here, the learners need to detect the part that all the words share, which is the root, in that case, sleep. Raising morphological awareness can improve lexical knowledge. The use of semantic maps can also help learners create semantic fields, while games are an engaging way to learn new words. This was the introductory video of the unit Language Teaching in Migrants and Refugees. If you want to learn more on multilingualism, please visit our website.